As you might imagine, crops are a super important input for making an order, uh, and so there's a lot of information that accompanies crops, so I will try to be concise, but this tutorial is going to contain a lot of information. So first of all, we have this sheet broken down into two sections. The first section here is our single crops, and so this is just a single crop growing in a tray. And I don't recommend mixing crops in a tray. Uh, it doesn't work in the spreadsheet. It's just generally not a good practice. We won't get into that. Scrolling off to the right here is our mixes. And our mixes are blends of our single crops. And so instead of trying to grow pea, radish, and sunflower in one tray, you grow separate trays and then you mix them afterwards. So this spreadsheet is set up to do that. So those are our two basic sections. They actually both collapse up here on the top. Uh, and so if you want to just work in mixes, you can collapse the singles and just work here. But let's start with our singles. So you're going to notice on the left here, there's a lot of information down the side, but across the top is very basic. Those are our crop names. So here I just have five crops listed and then just generic names here. Any name that goes in here is going to show up in our orders drop down list as an option for a crop. So even though it says crop six, seven, eight and stuff in here, in your spreadsheet, I would take those out. You don't want that showing up in your drop-down menu because it's not really a crop you can select. It's just a placeholder. So I'm going to keep that in there for now because it just makes it more clear about how everything works. So the first thing your crop needs is a name. So name goes there. Next thing here is the sowing rate. This is the grams of dry seed you use per tray. And it, it doesn't matter what tray you use, you set this rate. And we'll talk about trays in a second here. The numbers that are in here right now are for a 1020 tray or a 10 by 20 tray. Next thing is you can select your growing medium. Many of you are just using soil or just using fiber mats. This allows you to use both. Um, the only reason this is important, as well as the sowing rate, is that helps calculate your costs. Uh, each mat, each tray of soil, each tray of seed has a specific cost. And every time you sow a tray, you incur that cost. This helps us track that. Next is the tray size. Now in the soil and packaging sheet, which we'll look at later, there's a whole bunch of preloaded tray sizes. A common one is a 10 by 20 inch tray that's 1.25 inches deep. Very simple. Uh, so that's the one I've got most of these standardized here, except for this one. This is my 1010 live sunflower tray, which is a 10 by 10 tray, two inches deep. So you can see I've just got those in there like that. You can rename those whatever you want later. I just wanted these to be very descriptive. These are all in a drop-down menu. And in, in essence, they're, they're optional as well. You don't need them for an order. But this really, again, this is going to tell you how much soil, how much seed is being used for that crop. So this is very, very useful in there. Next thing is the overnight soak. Some stuff, like pea, does really well with like a 12-hour soak. Now, some of you might soak that pea in the morning and then sow it at night but often it's easier to sow it overnight. If that's what you do, you put a one here. If you don't do that, you put a zero there, which means you're soaking and sowing it on the same day. Or you're not soaking at all, you're just sprinkling it on as dry seed. Um, very simple there. What this does is it means the speckled pea is one day is gonna be the soak day, and then the next day is gonna be the sowing day. And so the spreadsheet can properly assign those days. Soak time is optional but you might want to put it in here just for a reference anyways. Days to maturity is crucial. As you know from crop planning already, at least I hope you do, is you basically set a harvest date and then you work backwards from that date. So these are the numbers that do it. So our days to maturity here are from sowing to harvest day, how long that's going to take. Our next one is our germination days or how long they're going to be covered. And this determines when we uncover that tray after sowing. So these values are here already, and the spreadsheet will come preloaded with a bunch of crops and values, but you need to adjust those for your system. Everybody's system is a little bit different. So those are some of our crop production properties. The next section here is in your uh, sales sizes. Uh, basically, what sizes do you sell in and what price? Now, this is set up for basically three different sizes, small, medium, large and then you can sell live trays as well, which is essentially a fourth size. So for everything, uh, you need a size in grams, not ounces, sorry. I'll try to work on an, an imperial version. Uh, it's just, 
<sighs> you know what I mean. Okay, so these values are, are in grams. Uh, so you need, if, if you're selling small products, you need to have small sizes in there. Uh, not only do you need it for the spreadsheet to work, you really need to label, put the size on your packaging. Um, and then you can have a wholesale price and a retail price. These are theoretically, they are actually, in, in actuality, they are optional, but having them in there is a good reference. And I may build in an auto price filling feature in the future. There's a few reasons why that doesn't work and can become troublesome, so I've left it out for now. But if you're gonna sell a product, it's a good place to have your price reference anyways. So you've got media, small, you've got medium, and you've got large. And you can set these whatever you want and the proportions can be whatever you want. You do not need to use anything, you know? It's like, maybe we're just not gonna do medium arugula. Totally fine, doesn't matter. But if you put medium arugula in your orders, nothing is gonna come up because there's no size associated with it. So the order sheet, order planner, doesn't know how much product to sew because it doesn't know how much it needs, right? Okay, so you've basically got small, medium, and large. I recommend having all the prices per size the same, as you see here but your weights can change. So a small is always $4, but a small sunflower is 125 grams and a small arugula is 40 grams. You'll just find that simpler. No need to do that, I highly recommend it. Then you can do uh, stuff by tray as well. And this just means you're taking that tray and you're selling it live, no need to cut it. Now quickly, this one here is a specific uh, example of a live thing. This is something we only sell live. So this is our sunflower, that that we are 1020 tray that we cut and package. If somebody wants a tray of that, we can grow a tray of that as well. It's fine. We're already growing those trays. Whether we cut them or sell them whole doesn't matter. But we also have a 10 by 10 sunflower that we sell live and we only sell it live. We don't cut it because we have the 1020s to cut with. So in this case, um, same thing. I have all the same information, but you can see for my 1010 tray, I have 65 grams, whereas in the 1020 tray, I have 125 grams. The tray is half the size, it's getting half the seed. Uh, all this stuff stays the same, essentially soil, uh, days to maturity, germination, but you can see I have a different tray in there. I have the 10 by 10, two inch deep tray. So that's gonna make that soil calculation more accurate. I've got my pricing in here for tray and wholesale. Here is a big difference. The yield on these trays here is in grams. I, I get a yield of about 600 gram on sunflower, 450 on the pea, everything. But the yield on this tray is one. One live tray yields one live tray. So make sure you don't make that mistake and put like, oh, okay, this is 600, so this is half the size, it should be 300. You're not harvesting that. So you, the, the spreadsheet doesn't need to know that information. A live tray has a value of one for the yield. And this is in the sheet instructions as well. You're going to forget this at least once, so don't. Um, down below is what I call the small unit equivalents. I've kind of taken it out of other spots, but some people really like this. This just basically means in terms of yield, how many, uh, what, how is this proportional to, to my small size? My small size is 100, 125 grams, so my yield is about 4.8 or almost five small packages per tray yield. So this just gives me a sense right away of what the value of a tray is. 4.8 times four gives me my wholesale value of that, of the, of that tray, which is close to $20 at wholesale. Uh, it's closer to $30 when you're selling retail. So if you think back to the numbers we put in earlier, you can see um, selling those small units um, would help us meet that goal. Okay, so this is just a look at our single crops. Now, let's take a look at our mixes. None of this stuff applies. We are not sowing mixed crops. We are taking our single crops and blending them to make a mix. Um, same thing, I just have generic names here. Two things that you must know, actually. One is your mixes must have the word mix in them. There are filters in there, and I think I have a little note right here that pops up. It, the word mix must be there. So as long as it's in there somewhere, that's fine. In contrast, your single crops cannot have the word mix in there. So this is a little bit finicky, but your single crops probably aren't going to have that word in there anyways. Just make sure to include it here. You don't need to use that word for marketing. You know, if you want to call it the spicy blend on your label, that's fine. But here you're going to call it the spicy mix. 
None of this information uh, um, applies to our mixes. Same thing concept with our, with our um, uh, sizes and pricing, so that's all the same. Here, though, is where you make your proportions. So in our spicy mix, it's 50% sunflower and 50% kaiwari radish. So what you're basically doing is selecting a crop from the drop-down menu. So once again, if that crop doesn't exist, it can't be here. And then you're going to select the portion as a percentage of weight. It has to equal 100. And then the order planner and the crop planner will take that information and assign more sunflower and more kaiwari radish than is needed for those specific orders because they're also needed for the mixes. Make sense? Maybe go back and listen to that again if that was confusing. This basically just says if we have spicy mixes, we need to sow, sow more sunflower and more radish. How many more? Well, that depends on the proportions and what sizes. So as an example, if I do one large spicy mix at a 50-50 mix, the crop planner knows to uh, sow 135 grams of each of those. So it just it, it makes that calculation. You don't need to know that stuff, but sometimes it's good to know how things work in the back end. So this is crops. Over here is uh, some calculations. This, this uh, thing here opens them up. Don't go in there. You don't need to go in there. Making changes in there will ruin uh, a bunch of stuff. So it just helps to sort of uh, have some helper cells over there to make some of these calculations. They're hidden, keep them hidden. Once again, if you don't have any mixes, just close this up. You don't even need to have that open. So you just have your crops here. Um, yeah, so it's pretty simple with crops. There's a lot of information there, but just imagine going through it crop by crop. I'm putting in my sunflower. What's my sowing rate? Um, you can look that up or you've already got a sowing rate and just go through these things one by one. What's crucial in here is basically this, this, your name, like this is the, the really important production information, and then these weights, because this tells the crop planner how much you need. And then of course your yield is crucial because I need to know if I need five larges, how many trays worth that is. So important information but fairly simple. And once this information is in, you don't have to come back here all the time. If you put in 10 crops and those are the same 10 crops you grow all year, you'll never look at the sheet again. So put a lot of time in the beginning to make sure it's accurate and you've got what you want. And the only time you're going to adjust it is if, you know, I had my yield down for 600 grams, but we're consistently getting 650 or more. I'm going to change this to 650. This is how you take a tool like this, which is a model. We're just modeling how things look, and it makes this model much more accurate. And over time, you might start shifting things uh, seasonally and go, you know, we're getting into winter. In winter, our yields are generally, oops, our yields are generally a little lower. I'm going to shift this back down. So it's a very, very useful in terms of that uh, to be able to adjust. But generally, you're not going to make a lot of changes there. So put the work in early and then uh, hopefully you don't even have to go back to it at any time during the season. So now that we have our customers and our crops, we can make orders. And a lot happens in the order sheet. So let's move over to that next.